Thank you very much. My name is Yuli Chia. I'm the director of the Living Donor Liver Transplantation Program at Leahy. And th thank you, Sages, for giving us the opportunity to present our work today. We have no financial disclosures. At first, I would like to go through some of the differences between a resection for living donation versus resection for tumor. So for living donor hepatectomy, the resected lobe has to be preserved for recipient implantation. So it has to be of adequate size for recipient, and usually we do that by calculating the ratio of the graft to the recipient body uh, weight, and it should be about 0.8%. Remnant has to be adequate for the donor, and usually we aim for remnant of at least 30% in the donor. We have to dissect the hepatic artery, portal vein, and hepatic vein branches to the lobe, as these will be used for reconstruction and anastomosis in the recipient. An accurate transection line is important because it reduces bleeding and it will allow us to reach the aim for the graph and remnant volumes as predicted. No inflow or outflow control are performed during transection. There may be segmental hepatic veins that may need to be preserved and reconst reconstructed. And careful extraction of the graph in a timely manner is important to reduce warm ischemic time. And the preoperative workup is a little bit more extensive than a resection for tumor. And in our center, we use a 3D uh, liver anatomy reconstruction. And at the end of the day, we are operating on a healthy person who do not need this operation and is only undergoing this operation to save someone else's life. Our donor is a 19-year-old man who underwent a full living donor evaluation and was deemed suitable to donate his left lobe to a friend who had cirrhosis secondary to PSC. His left lobe volume was 538 grams, leaving him with a remnant of 62.7%, and the graph body weight ratio was 0.92. All these numbers were appropriate. This is a MEVIS reconstruction, a 3D reconstruction of his liver showing normal portal vein and hepatic artery anatomy, which was standard. This reveal a uh, middle and left hepatic vein with no segmental branches that need reconstitution. And the biliary anatomy was type one. This is our proposed transection line, which is to the right side of the middle hepatic vein. We start by releasing the uh, falciform ligament and we are transecting in the uh, suprahepatic vena cava at the confluence. You can see here the middle and left hepatic vein, and we're dissecting a little bit on the lateral side of the left hepatic vein. We are going to mark the superior end of our transection line between the right and the middle hepatic vein, and this is where we're going to aim towards later when we transect the liver. We are opening the gastrohepatic ligament until it reaches our previously transected left triangular ligament. Dissection is performed at the superior end of the caudic groove lowering the Arantius ligament and mobilizing the corner between the left hepatic vein and the inferior vena cava. Next, we turn our attention to the hilum where a cholecystectomy is performed, and then we move our dissection towards the left side of the hilum in order to locate the left hepatic artery in the left portal vein. You can see the left hepatic artery there. Careful dissection is performed in order not to injure the left hepatic artery. And using the uh, robot technology allows us to carefully dissect each nerve and lymphatic channel from surrounding the left hepatic vein. We try to provide the recipient surgeons with the whole length of the artery if possible in order to facilitate their vascular anastomosis. Once this is dissected, it is uh, encircled with a ves vessel loop, and we pay attention then to the left portal vein, which is seen here. That's a small segment four branch, which we will divide between ligatures. And on the opposite side of the uh, left portal vein, there are also corresponding caudate lobe branches. There they are, that we will also divide between ligatures and clips. This allows us to encircle the left portal vein, and uh, it was looped with the uh, vessel loop. The left hepatic artery and left portal vein is then controlled with vascular clamps and allows us to demarcate the line of transection. And uh, this is enhanced by ICG technology. Uh, once the clamps are removed, we then perform an interoperative ultrasound to mark the course of the middle hepatic vein to ensure that we are on the right side of the middle hepatic vein. The segment five big branches are also marked. 
Transection of liver parenchyma is performed by first inserting two rubber band retractions. And uh, the device that we use for transection is a harmonic scalpel in the left hand and a Maryland bipolar forceps on the uh, other hand, which has uh, electrical cautery. Small bleeders can be controlled with the uh, Maryland bipolar. It is important at this point that the anest your anesthesia colleagues maintain the CVP at five or below because that will reduce bleeding. It might be helpful to reduce the pneumoperitoneum to about 12, if, if possible, at this rate to prevent any gas embolism. So this is very uh, slow, meticulous dissection, but as you can see, hemostasis is pretty good if you're on the correct plane. Bleeders can be controlled with bipolar, or in this case, uh, we can suture like it, a small little vein that's bleeding there. Again, this is performed with no inflow and outflow control. As we proceed deeper into our transectum plane, we reach the segment five hepatic vein, which we see here. This is a good signpost to tell you you're on the correct side of the transection plane. And the branches are uh, encircled and usually clipped. Now, as we uh, have transected about two thirds of the liver parenchymal, then we can uh, then turn our attention to the bile duct, which you can see here with ICG is very obvious, left and right, and uh, common hepatic duct. So the aim is to transect the left hepatic duct, which is where we're heading to here. Check again with ICG. And we tend to encircle the entire bile duct uh, hyalur plate complex. One last check before we clip the left hepatic duct, and the duct is then transected. So now from a vertical plane, we're gonna change the transection plane to a horizontal plane to separate out the left lobe from the uh, caudate lobe and we will proceed from the high limb all the way up superiorly until we meet our previously dissected uh, left uh, and middle hepatic veins area. And you can just about see the middle hepatic vein here, so we're almost there. And once we are at the area of the veins, they are in circle with the umbilical tape. The patient is now heparinized in preparation for graft retrieval. The artery is clipped, transected. This is the cross clamp time. The portarine is transected with a stapler and so are the uh, middle and left hepatic veins. The graft is inserted gently into a plastic bag and retrieved via a fan and steel incision. As completion, the artery is ligated and the bile duct stem is suture ligated. See there's no bleeding or bowel leak. And one final check out the random to make sure there's adequate vasculature. EBL was 250 mils. There was no post-op complication in donor or recipient. There was immediate graft function. And I just wanna show. There's another slide. Oh, this is him. Three months follow-up visit at the clinic. He was ready to return to EMT school three weeks post donor hepatectomy because he's just a fantastic human being. Thank you very much. <laughs>